Um, I'm Michael Walker. I'm the head of the School of Natural and Mathematical Sciences here at King's. Um, and what I intend to do for the next few minutes is to just uh, explain a little bit about, about King's as a college, about the school and what it does, and about the departments within it and, and what we offer for um, our postgraduates. Um, and I hope that will help you decide that you definitely want to come here and uh, begin your postgraduate studies with us, because it's definitely the best place to come. After that, I'm going to hand over to, um, to my colleague, um, Vaughan Robinson, who's sat at the top at the back there. Um, and uh, after, after that, we'd like to invite you, I think, to chapters, to have a, a glass of something and a, and a nibble, and more importantly, to, uh, to meet each other and, uh, and potentially some of the, uh, the, the tutors for the, um, for the postgraduate courses. So let me start by saying a little bit about King's, and I won't elaborate too much, and I'll relate it very much to, to what we do in, in, in natural and mathematical sciences. So as you probably all know, if you've looked at the website, King's was founded in 1829. It was one of the two, along with UCL, one of the two founding universities, the University of London, so colleges of the University of London. And it's had... Importantly for us, it's had a long tradition of research and research-led teaching um, in natural and mathematical, in the natural and mathematical sciences. So three examples that are, are very important to us. Maxwell did most of his groundbreaking work on the theory of electromagnetism while he was here. Um, Wheatstone built the first telegraph system which ran down the strand. Um, and what was unique about it, it incorporated some switching technology, relays and switching technology. And Daniel did all his pioneering work on, um, on, uh, on batteries here. So actually, if you put the three of them together, they laid the foundations for modern communication systems. They weren't aware that they were doing it at the time, I'm sure, but that's what they did. Um, radio communications switching technology, switching networks, and battery. Basically, that's what makes up the fundamental ingredients of a mobile communication system. Every one of them is needed. Once you've got all three of them, you've got the basis for a mobile communication system. So they did all that years before anybody had even dreamt up mobile communications. And actually, in a way, and I didn't realize it at the time, um, I owe 25 years of my career to those three gentlemen. So just to explain that, and to, so that you have some background about me, um, I started working on mobile communications in this country in 1984, late 83, uh, early 84, and there wasn't a network, there wasn't a license. Not many people believed in mobile communications at all. Um, so when I started, I met with a lot of scepticism about what I was doing. So other people that worked in the electronics company I worked for thought, oh, those theoretical guys are sort of sitting there doing these things which are never really going to be of value to anybody because uh, we can't imagine anybody wanting this. Uh, and there was no commercial case. Even if we built a network, there wasn't really any commercial basis for believing that um, we'd actually get any customers. And I left Vodafone uh, the company I worked for was the parent company of Vodafone at the time. I retired from Vodafone 25 years later, um, and there were 5 billion people on the planet using mobile phones. So, um, and it all goes back to switching technology, radio technology, and batteries that work and last. So I do owe a lot to those gentlemen. Um, and that's one thing I, I, I must say, if um, I, I'm very... Um, I'm very privileged to have had a career like that, and that's what I would wish for almost every student, that you can end up leaving your postgraduate studies and go and work on something which nobody knows that they need it. Um, nobody believes in it. That's even better. And it's especially um, agreeable when the marketing departments 
don't believe in it at all, and then you end up with every, the end of your career with everybody on the planet using it. That's, um, that's really very satisfying, so I hope you all find similar subjects to, to eventually work on. Uh, but coming back, to, um, coming back to King specifically, um, and let me say a little bit about the departments within the, within the school. Um, in mathematics, we have three departments, mathematics, informatics, which is a, a collection, conglomeration of telecommunications, computer science and robotics, and we have a department of physics. So in mathematics, we offer um, a master's course in mathematics, which is almost a pick, some, a pick and mix, so you can select which modules you want and build up something which is more on the applied side or more on the pure side. And then we also offer specialised applied courses um, one in theoretical physics, one in uh, financial mathematics, uh, and one in complex systems modelling, which has applications in, in lots of areas, including in, um, in the biomedical sciences. So there's quite a lot of um, relationships there between the medical schools and, the, and, and our school there. Um, in informatics, there's a huge amount of exciting work going on in the next generation of mobile systems since we never stop with them, there'll be a new generation, in what the internet will look like in the future, and applications of robotics, for instance, in, in the medical sciences. Um, so it's a relatively new department, our informatics department, but, but the head has decided he wants to make it a very dynamic and exciting place to, to be. And actually, when you go there, it feels much more like a, a start-up environment than when you go to other... Um, more established computer science departments so I, you know, that I find in other colleges in London, which are sort of a bit more like the, uh, uh, the monolithic corporate conglomerate environment. So um, if you come here and do anything that um, involves our informatics department, I think you'll find it a very exciting place. Different, but exciting. Earlier this year, we celebrated, um, in the physics department, we celebrated... Um, uh, the contributions that the UK had made, the recent contributions that the UK had made to the subject of physics. Um, so we entitled the talk from Maxwell to Higgs. Um, and Higgs is a, an alumni of, of this college, so Higgs of the Higgs boson. So we had the college well represented at both ends, with Maxwell, who was a pioneer of electromagnetism here at the college, and Higgs, who studied here his PhD, he did his PhD here, um, and is one of our most celebrated um, living physicists. So the physics department, whatever you do there, if you're going to study physics, it's very well placed in the development of modern physics within, within the UK. Whatever the department you go to, um, whatever course you take, I believe you'll find King's to be dynamic and exciting. It's never dull here. Um, under the umbrella of what I've called science on the strand, we offer within the school more than the individual departments can offer by way of, of distinguished lectures in science. So there will be distinguished scientists invited here and they will give lectures which hopefully are understandable to all of the, the postgraduates, irrespective of the discipline they are studying. In fact, Higgs will give the, uh, uh, the distinguished lecture in, um, in, in, Nova, in December, I believe it's early December. We also um, will be offering um, science debates and other activities to engage students across the, uh, across the different departments. And then there's the relationships that you can build um, with the biomedical sciences and with medicine through the relationships that the departments here have uh, with the schools south of, south of the Thames. Um, or indeed, just by mixing with the, uh, the postgraduate students that are in those, in those schools. So I think the college environment as a whole will provide you with a huge opportunity to broaden your interests. So although you may start here believing what you really want to do is pure mathematics, that's how I started my life, you end up, you may well end up deciding 
you actually kind of like to apply mathematics to biomedical engineering, biomedical modeling or whatever. So those opportunities will, I'm sure, emerge if you just spend your time talking to people as well as sort of getting your head down and doing some, some hard studying. So I, I can promise you if you, may, if you take the opportunity of half of what's available to you here, um, you won't be disappointed and that's just what is on offer within the college. And when you walk out of the front door, as I'm sure you've already noted, um, we are in a rather exceptional place in London with a huge amount on offer around us for when uh, you know, science just gets a little bit too hard and you want a bit of a relaxing evening off.